they they are speaking pipes but they're also the door in wow the From the fire in 1895, the fire burned so hot through this center opening in the tower that it changed the color of the stone. The stone is kind of rosy. It heated up the iron that was in the granite and made it change color. So you can still see it. The former organ was in the gallery and uh, water came down and it really destroyed more than half the organ and there wasn't much organ there I think it had 450 pipes and we drove by this church years and years every time we went by it we said oh wouldn't it be a nice place to build or an organ well they'll never do it they never had any music program there was nothing going on here so we just kind of thought we would never have a chance so all it took was an act of God nature <laughs> <laughs> let's go inside original church building was designed by William Strickland. He was a Philadelphia architect and he worked with um, Henry Latrobe, who was really the principal architect in Philadelphia. And the plans started to be drawn up about 1846 and the building is 40 feet by 60 feet on the outside of the stone. And the stone was all quarried locally and brought here by horse and wagon. And uh, the um, first organ in this church was an English organ that was in one of the homes, one of the stately homes that was in the area. And the organ fell into disrepair during the time of the Civil War when the church was impoverished. The, the church wasn't destroyed. In fact, the neighborhood uh, survived rather unscathed, but the organ fell into disrepair. And in 1867, they had William Simmons uh, from Boston, a well-known Boston organ builder, came, he was installing an organ in Richmond, and he came here and uh, evaluated the English organ and said, well, it was kind of a nice organ once, but it's so bad. Um, how about I sell you a used organ that we happen to have in our workshop. And so the church bought an organ from William Simmons for $300 and $20 transportation and installation. And we don't know what that organ was, but apparently it fell into disrepair over time and nothing uh, survived of it. Um, the church uh, completely burned in 1895 and you can still see on the outside of the building um, where the fire, the heat of the fire changed the color of the mm -hmm. stone around some of the openings. Uh, the roof burned off. It was like Notre Dame, Notre Dame of Paris, uh, completely burned off. All, all the wooden items within the church were destroyed. Only the stone uh, walls were left standing. And we were able to do a lot of things for them, like we renovated the pulpit and the reading table and there was there just all kinds of things because we're all purpose woodworkers that we could do that and uh, one of the men in the church is a real wood collector and he provided us with um, a lot of almost all the wood necessary for building the casework and so this really beautiful walnut that's in the casework mm -hmm. so could you show us the secret doors yes <laughs> uh, the organ has is obviously disposed on two sides of the chancel in um 
sort of uh, open chambers, uh, one side and the other. And so to get access to them, there's only access from the church. And so you can see here a screen that we built uh, into it. And then these wood pipes from the principal eight foot on the grate on this side and pedal octave eight foot on the other side. And they, they are speaking pipes, but they're also the door. In wow. The Wow, that's, that's really my kind of door. <laughs> it's very heavy. And, uh, I want this door in my apartment. This is a tailored booty from the later period, from 2019. And I'm going to do a demonstration of the stop starting with the principle 8. itself. Thank you. 
let's move on to the swell and get duct eight. on the pillow. There's also a 
fire flute, spire flute. Gedacht and principle four in the swell. Of the chest and down there, and since it has to open and close, we built a little uh, manifold to <laughs> to get the wind. Uh, uh, the, so there's... it doesn't play when the doors open. You, can't, you have to tune it with door shut. <laughs> and you have a wedge bell. We have a yeah on on both sides actually. We have a single wedge bellows that runs the wind here, and you can see that the weight is um, hanging hanging yeah. off of there. The electronics on the back, and then the key coupler stack uh, and keyboards. And it's all mechanical. It is all mechanical with uh, electric stop action. Mechanical playing action and mechanical coupling. Yeah, I've done that more than once. Bang my head on all sorts of bits of the organ. You can see that the trackers have to splay for the choir manual, which is behind the grate uh, from the keyboard. Yeah. And run on an angle there to the roller board and then up to the wind chest through. And how do you access? You can go right up the ladder. The hatch has a latch that opens, that holds it open once you push it. All the way up. Good. The first pipe you see there are the uh, bases of the board and 16. The board and 16 in the, in the choir. choir. And there is some more of it up on the wall. Um, a walk board there to get to it. And again, board and 16 at the very back, followed by the spire flute, eight foot, and then the that, what, what are these harmonic, harmonic flute, harmonic. four foot. Uh, mm -hmm. there, it's harmonic from C1 up, middle C. And, uh, yeah, this organ is a very, maybe not your typical 
Taylor and Booty, though, we do more of this now. It's uh, designed specifically so that for Episcopal churches that seem to like to buy organs from us to do not only um, the Lutheran chorale, and it, there's so much of our hymnody that is absolutely uh, similar to what we've sung for hundreds of years now, uh, and that is still important to do, but there's quite a bit of uh, choral accompaniment and uh, particularly Anglican stuff that, that is important to these clients. And so having um, an organ that's a little bit more flexible in some of those sounds and colors with still the same um, quality and uh, importance of, of the great particularly principal chorus and the ability to do Lutheran chorales, etc. Um, this, this is the trunk. Beautifully worked metal. Yes, that comes uh, from our shop. This guy, I believe, is 28% uh, tin. Um, you know, the, most of the rest of lead. Uh, trumpet hammered um, on the hammering machine, so you can see all those nice marks. And we lacquer all of our pipes uh, these days. So this is the pedal side, I see the Posana 16. Yes. Because it's impressive that you could carry all these pipes in this small space. Yeah, this chest is uh, placed in octave layout, so you have all the C's next to each other, and C sharps on the other side, and etc. cetera, uh, so that the Posana can be extended to eight foot. So you have both the Posana 16 and the trumpet eight from the same set of pipes, as well as the Subas. 16 and 8 foot. And the swell up off. The swell is a little bit, uh, uh, since it's a small division, uh, width-wise, uh, I've found that it's important to have lots and lots of shutters. That It's not the wind pressure that dictates how loud and soft the delta, the excursion between open and closed, the volume gets, but the number of shutters. And so I added shutters to the back side of this box that open only a little bit because you get most of your dB volume change in the first little inch or two inches of travel. Um, so you still get good reflection off the shutters back out the front shutters, which open clear up to 60 degrees, whereas these only open about 15 or 20. I forget exactly. <laughs> The wind is coming through that op this opening here. Yes, so the, the wedge bellows uh, and a separate reservoir for the pedal chest are placed above the sacristy uh, behind that wall. How do you tune the reeds on the... The reeds here... Yeah, and there's only one in the, in the swell, which I am sorry for. I wish I could have had a 16 foot dulcian or something uh, like that would have been fun there. The retuning flaps here and the oboe set right up uh, uh, there. And the pull downs are, excuse me, directly below us. So if the stop were on, you can do it yourself. You can do it yourself. Yeah, it's nice for the organist to just be able to pop up and. I like the ventilation vents. Yes, above. that has it's turned out to be really important, especially in the, this chamber installation where you're not in the normal air current of the room. And that bringing uh, cool air up from the bottom and letting it tumble across uh, without without blowing directly on any pipes, that's important. Uh, it'll it'll change the tuning of the pipe if it blows on them. What are these pipes? With the Those are the Delone Boss 16. Uh -huh. And it's uh, uh, they have roller beard or uh, they have beards on them, which this scale is actually directly from Owsley, uh, the Art of the Order Building, and is a, a wonderful sound. It's square in cross section of the pipe, mm -hmm. uh, and has a wonderful gur to it uh, and good fundamental as well. The beard is the interesting part on those pipes. It has a funny little notch that's very, very specific and a proportion to the width of the mouth and the depth at which that piece is put in 
uh, it plays a huge effect on how that sounds.